The Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree has officially arrived and you know your Elden Lord and the crew had to dive into it. We attacked this DLC with three different runs, one with New Game Plus, one with a character over level 200, and one veteran forced to start over like a noob. So how did it go? One more dodge. Well, there was quite a bit of death. But what did the DLC do well? Was the DLC too difficult? And is it possible for the Shadows of the Earth Tree to be game of the gear? Let's curse Bale to hell, cry over the death of our mimic tier, and jump right into this. So let's start off with the good. And when I think about the Shadows of the Earth Tree, there is quite a bit that I really enjoyed with this expansion. Because the fact that this is roughly like 40 hours or 50 hours of gameplay, but on top of that, I really love the fact that they added so many different weapons and incantations and spells and roughly over a hundred of all the different categories were added to this game and when you look at the different types of weapons and their abilities and skills they have some really OP weapons out there and I there are some that I didn't even get to find like like great hammers that would have to do insta kills if you do combinations of different things which I would love to have that right now fighting against the final boss um, but the fact is the the different types of weapons like backhand blades which were, in my opinion, probably one of the strongest in my in my uh, in my inventory at this moment, mainly because it has the skill to go to the enemy's blind spot. It literally has where if you click a, your skill while they're attacking, it will instantly go behind them and then slice them. And it's like these are great things that I wish I had in the main game that would make my life so much more easier fighting against certain enemies that are super long range and, and I can go at them in any way, shape, or form. But then you have Dragon Hunter's Great Katana that is specifically strong against dragons, which fighting Bale made my life a lot easier to do. And other Great Katanas, uh, Great Steel Hammers, even Fisticuffs going Dry Leaf Arts. But on top, they have incantations like Prayer of the, Prayer of the Earth Tree, which the entire lore behind it is really cool. But the fact that you can put it down and it heals all your allies right next to you. So it's like these are all things that, in my opinion, are fantastic additions. But I'm like, imagine having this in the main game. And that's what I think is so cool about this is that, yes, the the general consensus is that Shadow of Archery is way more difficult, but they're also giving you things that are a lot better for this main game compared to what you had previously. So it's almost like they're giving you a lifeline and saying, hey, use these really strong weapons in this really difficult DLC. So the good for me is that you're adding so much more stuff overall. But Haki, what is your good here? So I got a couple things I'll highlight here. Uh, first, we have the art and cutscene. So uh, Elden Ring has always been fascinating, and now we kind of get to see a little bit of a darker tint being in the uh, shadow realm. But uh, from the bosses uh, to just even staring at uh, the unplayable areas of the map, you can kind of get lost in the greatness of, of the Elden Ring art. Uh, and it brings you right to the cutscenes. They're like mini movies. Uh, so much, you know, artistic detail and lore goes into these cutscenes. And it kind of makes you laugh after everyone you see. It just keeps getting crazier and crazier. Uh, but yeah, the last thing I wanted to highlight was uh, the gameplay. So the gameplay, um, it's you know a, a very unique gameplay. It gives you a whole uh, variety of, of different ways to play. Such a great co-op game to play with your friends, and it's a true melee and magic kind of open world game. And I think because of this DLC, it's definitely one of the best ones out right now. Yeah, Angelica, what is your good here? Yeah, I have a couple piggyback on what you guys said. Um, there's a lot in this uh, DLC, if you know, call it. I mean, some people will pass, some companies would pass this off as an actual game. I mean, they give you a lot. You got 77 bosses, to mention the 96 weapons, plus the incantation spells, you go well over 100. Um, the new talismans, they really, you know, there's, there's a lot there to do, and it takes the positives from the base game and brings it into this DLC um, with the content it provides. The bosses, again, there's some big time bosses in this one that are very fulfilling to beat, um, also very difficult, but a lot of fulfilling stuff. And, and again, the art style, like Haki said, you know, Elden Ring is a good example of games that don't have to be stunning, like in every single detail of a map or a character, but look absolutely beautiful. And it's the art design, the different environments, the environments they create in these boss battles. Um, it, they take the positives in the base game, they rev it up, put it into this DLC. 
um, and those that are fans of Elden Ring. And if you're starting out new, you still got to do some things to get access to this DLC. So you can't just jump right in. But this is a really it, this is built upon the positives of the base game. So if you haven't played it yet um, and you're a fan of Elden Ring, this is could be right up your alley. Yeah, I feel like the boss battles were extremely difficult, but they had some really great kind of, um, I guess you say scenery while fighting them, which gives off that like epic moment. Even earlier bosses in the DLC had like that really cool, um, you know, background that's happening around you while you're fighting. And the music was was top level. I mean, that was something that I I'm, I was looking for the the albums to officially drop, and I pissed, I got it really angry because I couldn't find it. They haven't dropped the album yet, but they have like the you could buy the audio um, if you bought the the expansion of the DLC. And I was just like, you know, can you just drop the album so I can like get the songs without having to pay for you know have the yeah, have, the, have the music on my Xbox, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want that. I want it just on my on my phone. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. And I think for me, and Elden Ring has always had a difficult time trying to tell a story, right? And in Dark Souls games, or all Souls-like games under from, from, from software, always had a difficult time, or they meant to do it, where you don't really get the story right out at you. You have to read every single thing. You have to talk to every NPC. And I don't mind talking to NPCs because it's good to kind of get story from that. But Elden Ring always has a magical way of this giant amount of lore that they don't really explain it. And it feels like there are so many questions that were still left unanswered even after this DLC. Like, I'm not going to go into too, really much spoilers because the game is, uh, the DLC is still out. But Melania, like, you know, obviously this all has to do with Mikola, right? I think everyone knows that Mikola is involved in this DLC. Melania is sitting by the tree waiting for Mikola to come back to help heal her, whatever their plan is. And we get no further dialogue about that. It's almost like Elena doesn't even exist in this DLC. And I get it. You know, you don't really go too much into it because it's happening at the same time. But it's almost just like, does she know the plan? Does she understand the goal of what Mikula is trying to do? Is, is that even clear? Right. So it, that's kind of the thing that along with that and even with with the whole like backstory of Moog and Don, like these are major characters that you don't know why whether Radon is for the Golden Order or not. You never get the answer here. Moog, why was he... I mean, we understand the why of he, he loves Mikula so much, but Morgoth, like Morgoth's brother, like you go and kill him, like, you know, in the main game, like, is there any sort of connection that they build between that in this DLC? And they don't, right? They don't give any sort of, you know, answers to those questions. And it feels like that, and I hate to say this, but it feels like this DLC was in, I know it's in another universe, but it's like a whole different multiverse where it's like no one in the main game realizes that anything like this has happened it's almost like your guys are all separated from the entire main game and just said do this story then go back to the main story it's like everyone just like oh yeah and all this stuff is happening and then no one really cares and one really knows i feel like they need to build bridge that gap between the main game and this one because if i make a comparison to like the witcher's dlcs with blood and wine and heart of stone those dlcs expanded the lore and connected it to the main game where it, it kind of furthers these characters you met in the main game and gives them more time. Now, granted, I understand this is a DLC during the, the game, so it's a little different, but still, I would want to see more of that connection built there. Uh, but Haki, what is your bad here? Yeah, there's really not a lot to say about the bad, but I think you did make a, a pretty good point there. I feel like there's not a lot of DLCs that I know about uh, that, you know, are, are in the middle of a game uh, that don't actually expand on the, you know, the, the end or, or give us more uh, to play, you know, in the future of the game. So, you know, maybe one of you guys can, you know, uh, expand. I'm sure there are other games that are like that, but it seems like this is successful, but they do definitely have, um, I guess uh, it is a Souls, uh, the, the Souls way. They, de they definitely have a way that they tell their lore and it's, you know, not, um, you know, you have to dig for it, I, I guess. Uh, so, but other than that, I mean, not, not, not a lot to, to say on the on the bad side. Uh, I, I did see a, a few of the same dragons on the, you know, outskirts of the world. I think they were called the Ghost Flame Dragon. But other than that, there's not not a whole lot of, of bad for this game or the DLC. Well, Jelica, what is your bad here? Not a couple. I mean, again, a lot of strong things, but there are some things to address. First, uh, I want to bring up performance. Um, guys, we held from from software to a high standard, just you know, for obvious reasons. Performance-wise, it wasn't the greatest. I mean, when we sit there and you guys load up into a game, I've noticed uh, quite a bit of times 
that you'll the character will load and then the, the level will load around you after the fact right and if other games did this it would be called out and so i can't leave uh, from software off the hook for that also had some major frame issues when it comes to summoning but again performance solid but it could definitely need use some tune-ups i think they put out a recent patch uh, to try to help with that the other stuff building off of what marsman said it's not so much of you know other characters again not going to spoil the events that happen i'm just going to say of things that are not in this dlc it's been out for two weeks right so we don't want to give away too much information but nothing about melina or there's there's so much interpretation about melina that you see in the base game the gloom-eyed queen godwin you don't get much more melania like marsman said you don't get much uh much from and even the formless mother or like the the blood god that's another you know entity that we don't really see a lot but we see a lot of characters using those incantations um but we don't get more into that and so to me it's things that it wouldn't be a huge deal to me if we had another dlc but we don't so it's leaving a lot of these stories untold or up for interpretation and that's the unfortunate part maybe a tv show comes out for elden ring which i know that there were some discussions about uh, that bridges that gap but for the game wise for a game like mars man said with a lot of you have to do a lot of reading you have to do a lot of interpreting um kind of p- putting pieces together there's a lot of questions still left untold um in this one yeah and i feel like it when it comes to Elden Ring, we don't really know. I think they said that they aren't not going to come out with a sequel to this game either. I think that was confirmed, right? I think they say that they weren't going to make another Elden Ring, that they, this was kind of the it. It might not. It. Yeah. yeah and, and, might, they might be a new that, uh, world. It might be a new thing. But um, one thing's for sure is that there's not a DLC for this base game. Yeah. They, they said there's no more DLCs for sure. I don't, I'm not sure if they ever said they're going to make a sequel, which would be great if they were to jump into a sequel into the same universe and maybe continue the game uh, almost like, you know, maybe your character is the Elden Lord and now it's like a whole new God, you know, whether it's Ronnie or not, that would be a great idea, but I'm not sure if they would even do that at this point. And that's kind of the problem is that this DLC is the last of the story you're going to get for however long it's going to be. And you're not really getting much closure to some of that. And so the next question is going to be whether this DLC is too hard. And there's been a lot of talk about this DLC being too difficult. I saw I saw ranges from from people saying that, you know, that people who are who are married and have kids have a situational disability that they can't pause the game. And because of that, they need to fix everything about this title and create a pause menu and and all that stuff. And 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 they're hurting people with disabilities. I, I don't know about you, but I watch people play this game and beat the final boss with a flute. OK, with Dance Dance Revolution and clicking buttons by dancing. So I don't know if it's saying that this is too difficult or maybe maybe button, I'm no. a, maybe I'm just a, too much of a bitch to fight the final boss while other people are doing flute sounds or doing neuro True. neuro logic. I don't know, but it is definitely hard. But I am also going to say, what do you think they, Miyazaki was going to do? What do you think at, so from software is going to do? They were, they were going to make you make you go in there level 400 and just say cake walk through this thing. Pay us $40 yeah. and just moonwalk through this thing. No, they wanted to make you grind for it. Oh, good Please. Stuff, bro. Frank, I don't know if that's it, dude. Oh, oh. There's no thing. <laughs> it's three. What is he doing? Whoa. It's three times? No. He just nuked himself. No, he's alive, bro. Because that was the whole point of a DLC, especially if it's, if it's during the middle portion of the game. There's one thing it's like, yeah, you know what? When they when you play with more than one person, you are automatically nerfed, right? That is something that is built into the game. But now they're saying, well, if you want to beat this on your own, like you're going to be nerfed. And unless you go and find these items, right, to go and help unnerf you, which I think is a is smart because now it makes it where it's like it encourages you to explore. You can't just speed run through this game without having some of these things to help you unless you're OP. And there's some people like even let me solo her. I was like, this is the hardest bosses that I've ever had a face. And he's somebody that's like a legend in the community. Right. So it's like even. Yes, I get it's hard, but it's almost like what you expect. It's it's a from software game. They're not going to just make it easy for you. And granted, yes, game journalists are horrific. 
at games. I, I, I think that's a pretty consistent thing I've seen more often. Um, but we're not going to nerf. Not, no one's going to nerf Elden Ring for you so that you feel feel better about yourself or something. I, I, I mean, sure, there are people out there that have disabilities that that need to have things that are in place to help. But to say that situational disabilities, like I have. I got things in my thumb. My thumbs hurt when I'm playing the game too much. And now I, I have a disability. I can't play. When I heard that online, I was like, I was, I was shook. I think I, I fell over hearing that situational disability. Uh, that was, that was even a word. Like I, I only think that that even makes sense. So as it's hard, but it's not too hard. You can, if, if we can all play it and we can all grind through these bosses and we're pretty good at gaming, but like uh, for a lot of you guys, like Jill and Hockey, these, this is your first era from uh, uh, souls like games. So, you know, you guys are, I played Sekiro, which is considered one of the hardest of the from, of from software games. You know, you guys have, you know, this was your first Aki, and this is your first Legend of Kill. Maybe you guys have better insight on is this is too hard for somebody, but uh, Haki, what do you think? Yeah, I think the whole, uh, you know, uh, put a pause menu on Elden Ring, I think that's crazy talk. Um, I mean, it is a hard game, but uh, it's a Souls game. I, I learned what a Souls game was during Elden Ring, like you said, and uh, and it's not even the hardest one. You know, you can summon people. You can um, not only can you summon, you know, summon your friends, but you can summon ashes and stuff like that to help you. So um, you do get a little bit of help with this game. And there's a lot, uh, like I said before, there's a lot of ways to play this game. Uh, but yeah, it definitely is a, a very hard game just in general. Uh, but the DLC, let me tell you, it's a, it'll be a wake up call to anyone who, uh, you know, solos this game and who's under level 150. Uh, I was level 90 when I started the DLC and uh, I could barely do it myself. So, you know, you have to be between level probably 120 and, and 150 if you're by yourself. But if you have friends, I mean, you can definitely do it. You know, at level 100, if you have a couple late weapon game or uh, late weapon uh, uh, weapons uh, on you from the game, uh, you know you should be fine. But definitely try not to solo it if you're under 150. I mean, I, people will call me a loser, but I, I yeah, first off, I didn't have a mimic tier beating the main game because I didn't, I could find it. But when I found the mimic tier for the second run through New Game Plus, I'm using the mimic tier. I know a lot of people are like, well, that's not really beating it. I don't care if I'm using the mimic tier to help me get through this DLC, then that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, but let, let Jill kill. Do you think this is too hard? Um, it's hard. It's very hard, but you know, there's, there's a bunch of different things. It's like the two crowds, the get good and it's too hard crowd battling it out, especially in the beginning when, um, this, this DLC was getting review bombed. Um, and I think there's some kind of blame that goes both on from software and on the general, you know, audience when it comes to the situational disability thing, which is apparently it's a term used um, in the gaming world. I do think if you're not invaded, there could be a pause section. I understand why Elden Ring doesn't have a pause because you can be invaded, right? So if you're paused and get attacked, you know, like you can't stop an invasion from happening because you pause the game. So I kind of I think that's how the setup of that game works, why they don't have it. But when it comes to getting too hard, I mean, I'm pretty shocked at the initial outrage that was here. Um, I was nervous that being over level 200 when I went into this, that it would be too easy. I was a little worried, but then once you, you find out right away that they have nerfed the entire community, um, and it's really based on those fragments um, that we talk about. So, you know, that was really, that's the only thing I have pushed back on From Software about, aren't that they, the way they set up this nerfing with the fragments. It's how not blunt they were about it. And I know that a lot of journalists came out and said, you gotta get these fragments, you gotta get these fragments. Um, and then they came out with like an article from software a couple days later on guide to say, hey, this is what's important for the DLC. Make it for the general audience, you know, like who just plays the game, they come in and play it. Not a lot of people are, you know, laser focusing on what the journalists are saying, or maybe laser focusing on what kind of the surrounding media is saying about this DLC in game if you could show those stat buffs when you get a blessing instead of you know it's kind of like on two different screens you know when you're leveling up you can see those stats hey if i increase this all this stuff goes up they should have done that with these fragments instead of kind of putting it on two different screens to see actually you're getting unnerfed here um i think it would be a little bit better um for them but for the crowd guys this is a 
this is not for a week of hard game. This DLC, you got to get your fist going. This is a scrap game. And sometimes people need to put their pride to the side and use summonings, change up builds, put in some defense, uh, put in some defense incantations. Um, there's different things you can do here. And it's really forcing you to kind of change your viewpoint and adjust from situation to situation. And that's kind of the fulfilling thing that I think when you beat that boss that has killed you like 50 times, when you finally win, it's a huge, feels like a huge accomplishment. And, and From Software has a really good taste of that. Some bosses, though, do feel like they're way too broke. They don't let you, they don't want you to summon, they charge you, like they hit you right away. They really make it like pain inducing. But the fulfillment, I think, is well worth it. And I don't think it is unfairly hard. I mean, there are times where I think I've lost sleep over not over losing to some of these bosses. And the final boss, I, I am not going to say who it is, but that is the most difficult boss in the entirety of the game. There's no not even a closest. Yeah. A lot of people will say Bale. And like, Bale wasn't a problem. You know, I clapped Bale's cheeks. It wasn't Bale. That was a problem. It wasn't even, I know, Ranella. Or, uh, yeah, I think it was Ranella. Oh, she was. She was annoying as hell, but the final boss oh, is something of a tier of its own. Night, whatever. This is this is ball final yeah. boss is better than Millennium, right? It, it is. Yeah, this yeah. final boss is insane. Okay. And I, 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 for anyone who's beaten the DLC, I, I tip there. my hat, I tip my, I tip my hat to you. Right? It is, a it is a boss to be home. So you gotta put your pride to the side. Yeah, you, gotta you gotta use gotta. those summons. You, you gotta, gotta to use it. those weapons that everyone says cheating. Yeah, you gotta do it. Um, and now let's jump to the final section. We're gonna give kind of our overall outlook of the game and DLC combined and, and kind of jump into this other question that a lot of people are asking is, should this qualify for game of the year because of the scale and, and how good it is? And then we'll give our opinions about whether you should buy this now, later or not at all. So when I'm looking at about this overall experience of Elden Ring main game with this Shadows of the Earth tree, it is something of a tier of its own in gameplay and, and, and what you can do and how fun this game is and the expansive world that they have. I mean, we saw Elden Ring and we said, hey, this world was massive in scale and what they had created originally. And it was something to behold and the way that they mirrored after, you know, Leg uh, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild and, and what you can do and just go just go out and play your go play your experience and go have fun with it. And I made several videos about Elden Ring and why it was a legendary title. And um, I feel like it, it hit all the marks you would want to see in a great game. And now the Shadows of the Earth Tree just expand upon that. They give you another 40 to 60 hours of gameplay that you can go do. 77 bosses to fight overall, 11 main bosses, right? 100 plus weapons, incantation spells, and all that stuff that you can go unlock, right? And, and now you're getting to a level where this game just feels so immense. That it's like, you, if you start this out from day one and you just play it through all the way, like you have so many hours that you can go in and enjoy the full scale of this. And I think this DLC makes this full experience to levels of what I felt with The Witcher and how The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt combined with the Blood, Blood and Wine and Tarsus of Stone as a whole. I felt like that that whole experience was considered one of the greatest games of all time. Um, I don't think it tops the greatest games of all time. But it like it gets me feeling like, damn, this is an experience that if you don't get to play Elden Ring, you don't try it out, you're really missing out on something that is that is legendary um, of a game that you can go and play. And I know that um, a lot of people will put this game probably with one of the best Souls games ever. Right. And I think I would put that as my top Souls game. And I have to play more of them. But I feel like this to me, it is um, and now. Should this qualify for game of the year? I mean, I am one of those as a fan. I am saying Yes, it does, because as a fan, I'm looking at this and saying this is a full experience. This is as sometimes when you look at the overall experience of the Shadows of Earth Tree, 40 to 60 hours of gameplay maps the size of this. This is a, a level of a game, right? This looks like the same levels of games like Horizon for uh, Forbidden West and others that had massive open worlds that you can accomplish all these things in 40, 60 hours of gameplay, like 77 bosses. Like these are this is like a whole game level worth of stuff. Now, from in comparison to that, to Elden Ring, it's less because Elden Ring is bigger. And I feel like me as a just taking the fandom out of it, I'm going to say this shouldn't qualify because it's a DLC, right? It's just an, it's just the same game, but just added story to it or added added things that were left out of the main game, right? I feel like 
that's where I have to look at this. As a fan, I think it should because it's so fun. It's such a great experience. It, you know, especially this year with not a lot of games that are hitting that top layer yet that we haven't really seen much of, it like would be either tied or would win. Like, I think right now the other game is Final Fantasy. Like, that's that's the other game that I think right now would win it if it's not the Shadows of the Earth Tree was qualified. All right, but if I'm if I'm just a gamer that and looking at this from um, a, a not not as a fan, it shouldn't because it, at the same time it would be like, well, then that means Blood and Wine or Heart of Stone should be qualified, or, or it would be I would be going against what I say when it comes to my opinions about remakes. I think remakes shouldn't be qualified, but I'm gonna say a DLC should qualify. I, I don't think it, I don't think ZLC should qualify, even how good it is. Right? I feel like that's how my opinion is, and. I would definitely say to buy this now. It is something that is it is complete. I know there are some some uh, technical issues sometimes, but even that being the case, it's still a fun ass experience. And whether you're going to play it by yourself or play it with people, um, it is a great time. Uh, it's really hard, but it's a great time to play. Uh, but hockey, what is, what do you feel about this overall game experience? So this is probably one of my uh, favorite games so far that I've played in the last decade. And it's probably in the top five or at least top seven uh, of all time for me. And, and you guys were the ones that got me into it. And uh, pretty much the only reason why I got into it is because I was able to play co-op. Uh, so that's one big thing that, that got me into this this game. And I think that's one of the biggest differences uh, that, you know, this is now a Souls game that you can play with other people. So yes, it is very hard, but uh, you know, the payoff to see the, you know, the art and the story and everything unfold is, is definitely worth it. Uh, this game is, is absolutely amazing and the DLC just added to it. And, um, you know, everything from the story, art, the cutscenes, all the different weapons you can use, uh, it really is a unique game. Uh, it's definitely in the high 90s for me, uh, you know, if we were gonna be rating it. Uh, but uh, listen, the, the DLC, it's only $40. It's definitely a buy now. Um, and should it, you know, qualify? I think if a remake or a remaster uh, is, is up for debate being the, the game of the year, I think that a DLC should. But, um, you know, not a DLC like Dave the Diver where it's, you know, only a couple hours. Angelic Hill can tell you about that. But anything like this, man, 30, 40, 50 hour DLC, which is pretty much a game, um, you know, it, it should qualify. I think it would definitely uh, win if it did qualify. Angelica, what do you think about this overall experience? Um, I'll say this. I'll, I'll get it out. This is a buy now. $40 for the amount of content that you have. If you've been a fan of Elden Ring, this is an easy purchase. If you're not a fan or you haven't tried it yet, you obviously have to do some things in the base game to get access to this DLC. But it is a full experience. And, I'm, you know, we came at this in three different angles. Aki mentioned he came in this at a low level, uh, starting a new game. Marsman came in New Game Plus. I had an over 200 level. I have spent over 300 hours um, from the base game and the DLC combined um, for Elden Ring. And again, I'm this is getting into my top 10 games of all time. And I've played a lot of games for a long period of time. And I think this is in my top 10. And I'm not going to, you know, because The Witcher and Breath of the Wild, those are legendary top tier you know, top of the spectrum when it comes to open world games for me. And I think Elden Ring has a seat at the table. Uh, I'm not going to say who's better, but they have a seat at the table in that tier um, as an overall experience um, for myself in this. So I think they're in the same spectrum um, is where I'm getting at. Now, it's not perfect, right? It, it's a flawed masterpiece, in my opinion. Summoning, I know they talked about adding seamless co-op in the next installment of the game. Boy, we really wish it was in this one um, because the summoning, as great as it is and as much as I loved it, it was painful at times to play with people. So I do wish, again, that they, they make that adjustment going forward. But this is a tremendous experience for people, an absolute buy now. And as a huge fan, as I praise all of this from From Software, who has proven to be one of the top, if not, I think, in my opinion, the top currently developer in the gaming world today. It shouldn't be game of the year. It should not be nominated. I know we get into the remastered remakes, but the problem with the remakes is how big of a change do they make from the original content? With a DLC, this is additional content to a main game. So I, we've already kind of had this long fight about remasters. 
but the gaming industry may remaster is a thing that get into game of the year conversations with Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 4. Uh, there were talks about Dead Space. And now we've started to hear talks last year when it came to Cyberpunk. And some game, you know, some game awards put Cyberpunk in as a game of the year nominee. And it shouldn't have. But again, if we're going to start doing that and DLCs are open game, this one should definitely get in. But I just don't feel that it should be open game for game of the year for DLCs. Well, yeah, that's kind of be our overall outlook of this Elden Ring expansion and the game itself. But if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. We have a lot of different videos up on the channel recently. We created a, a what we would want to see for Halo 7's multiplayer. You can check that out in the end screen. But until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.